Hi, my name is Maria Sanchez, and I'm the Chief Education Officer of Latino Educational Solutions. I'd like to welcome you to Latinos Building a Legacy, a feature that we have on latinosgotocollege.com. If you are interested, we post videos from time to time. We also have a blog, and we have a newsletter that you can subscribe to if you'd like. For more information, reach out to us through our contact information. So, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are so excited to have you on this edition of Latinos Building a Legacy. Um, folks, for those of you who are tuning into this video of Latinos Building a Legacy, I have Nick Fernandez joining us. Um, he is an engineer um, and has a story to tell in terms of what he has been through through his college experience and beyond and so i just like to welcome to our virtual stage to this evening nick fernandez and so nick if you'd like to take it away and tell us a little bit more about yourself yeah definitely uh, thank you very much for having me um so a little bit about myself um born and raised in columbia south america moved to the States around um, halfway through high school, moved to Miami, Florida. And then after finishing high school there, decided to go to uh, college at Ohio State. Um, I did my undergrad in electrical and computer engineering. I did a minor in humanitarian engineering, and I decided to stay there and pursue my master's in electrical engineering. Um, since leaving Ohio State, um, I decided to pursue a career in the semiconductor industry. Uh, where I started as an equipment engineer, um, then went to a technician supervisor, and my current role is an engineering manager um, on the equipment engineering side. Um, and yeah, so on, on the topic of discussion on on college, um, it's I, I say it's it's a it's a complex thing. Uh, but, but for me, I did see it in a multifaceted way. Uh, one. Um, being that I wouldn't say I, I was in a high school rebel, but seeing it as a way to, to leave, kind of leave leave home or leave the nest to say was one of the big things. Because I, I do get asked a lot, why did you move from Miami, Florida to Ohio? Uh, one, that, because I was definitely looking for, for that independence um, as uh, Latinos and Latinas. Um, you, you build that very close um, relationship with your parents at times. Um, I'd say I, that, that was that was at least my experience. Um, that I definitely wanted to, I want to say, find who I was and go into this like awakening. But um, I, I guess I wanted to go at it at myself. Um, but with that, I did see college as a way to to give back to my parents um, through all the sacrifices that that they put up and everything that they did for myself. Um, so everything that I did when I was growing up and even lit leaving our lives in Colombia to come to the States um, with their number one goal in mind that was for my sister who also went to Ohio State and majored in the same major that I did for her and myself to actually have a, a good education um, because they saw it as um, a good opportunity for us to build this legacy, build the future. Um, so yeah, I, I did see it in a way, one, to, to find my independence from my parents uh, and my family, but also to, to give back to them as that they did uh, for, for myself and my sister. Thank you. So you have a very unique story. Um, you know, you've traveled across many different cities and different pathways and have found yourself in Texas working as an engineer. Um, you also talked about having your sister and kind of going through that collegiate experience with her and what it was like to have a sibling in college. And then you and I are both immigrants. So what it was like to be the first in our family to graduate college and um, to go and pursue a master's. Um, I think those are all topics that we can talk about tonight. Um, and we'll just go through them one by one if you want, and we can just kind of let the conversation go wherever it goes. Um, but <clears throat> I think our stories are powerful as immigrants, as first-generation college students, and as people who have traveled many different pathways to find education at the core to be the way forward. So um, 
I don't know if you have any thoughts in terms of being a first generation college student um, or being an international student or having that international background at least. Yeah, it was, I'd say, and I think I, I shared it to a couple of my friends. I, I didn't have a culture shock coming to the States as I went to Miami, Florida. Um, there's a very big Hispanic community there. I didn't feel as I could have stand out as much as I did uh, once I actually moved to to Ohio to pursue my undergrad and, and grad career, um, meeting uh, some of my close friends as Stephen or classmates that some had never either left their state um, or even the country um, and having going into college with a, a different perspective and having although we were around the same age having lived a little bit more per se on meeting more people having gone through a lot more um, did I'd say offer me a, a different perspective um, in a way that I guess it I it gave me a something that I always had in the back of my head that I could not give up. Um, I, I do know that there's multiple times across my undergrad, my master's that I was like, wouldn't it be just easier to like go back home, um, live at home go and go to like uh, either a community college or a university close by. Um, but I, I kind of had it in the back of my head that I, at least for myself, um, I would have seen that as a, as a defeat, um, as a personal defeat um, after everything that my parents uh, had done um, and what they, the sacrifices they were doing for me to, to attend. Um, so having that in my mind, in the back of my mind and going through everything on all the movements and seeing what was put in for me to get to where I was, it's, I guess I, I never saw giving up as an option. And every time it, it got hard, I, I knew I could find a solution um, or find a way to, to make the situation better, um, which I do believe encouraged me to, to continue going. And every time I was either involved in some type of roadblock, either academically, personally, um, it, it just gave me more emphasis to, to keep on moving. Um, and going back to one of the points you actually just brought up, um, having my sister there, um, definitely one of the bigger things that I was afraid about moving states and was being by myself. Um, I, I share that going to a university like Ohio State that's so big, um, and never actually touring it. The first time I went there um, was for orientation. I didn't know it was as big as it was. Um, that first year, I'd say it was definitely rough um, being by myself, not having anybody. Um, but luckily, um, my sophomore year, my sister transferred into Ohio State. And luckily, we both were pursuing the same major. So having that, I would say, partner uh, going through the same things, I definitely made the, the college experience a lot better. Um, but another area that I found when moving away to college is finding your, your community, finding your familia um, through either student organizations or just a close group of friends that either have same ambitions, either by majors or just have just gone through similar things um, like yourself. Um, but not only that, also kind of getting outside of the comfort zone and trying to meet people that are different that have different experiences to not stay within your bubble because if it's something that where we are right now having all those different perspectives and definitely be of an advantage either academically or um, in a work scenario yeah so you brought up a really good point in terms of having community and building that community and trying to make sure that you have community in some way, shape or form that's so important to college students and getting involved and finding it through organizations. I think it's really important for students who are looking to go to college to realize that there are support systems that they can build. Um, so I like to use the um, <clears throat> example of LeBron James or any sports star or, Mega star or anyone that you think is at the top of their game, right? In terms of what are the five people that are surrounding them? Are they are people who are performing at minimal or at their best, you know? And so when I talk to students and I talk about what does your plan for college look like, I talk about what what do your five look like? What what are your five? Are they parents? Are they students? Are they peers? Are they 
um, religious organizations. <clears throat> and so, so I think when you talk about building community, it's so important to realize that there's a lot of different ways that you can build a community and that you came and had the international experience and that there's, there's ability for students and parents to, to learn and have a better understanding of what potentially can be there if they open themselves up to diverse experiences. And when you talked about earlier about Latinos and you really started off the conversation with saying that you really wanted to gain some sense of independence from your family as a Latino that's not traditionally done. And I've mentioned that in previous videos, um, that that is important because college does give you that space to grow. And there is some research that's done in higher education that shows that when you go off to college and you learn and you're away from people in your bubble and you come back, say for fall break or a break or just a weekend, um, there is some growth that changes and happens and occurs. And there might be tension, there might be reflection, there might be a whole bunch of different emotions, but it really does change you. College does change you at the core. It, it helps you and it should help you become a better engaged citizen, more well-rounded person, um, someone who is able to perform at a level that um, is profesh professional and wanting to be of service to others, right? Create community because it's that shared commonality, that shared experience. And so I'm glad that you found it with your sister and that you were able to find it um, because there's so many Latinos who may go to college and may not feel like they see people that look like them and, and are like them. And so that's why I think encouraging from the get-go of building that community is so important. So can you talk a little bit about um, some of the experiences that you had kind of broadly in terms of, did you do any service trips? I know that you did humanitarian engineering. Did you do any um, trips that were outside of the classroom that built into your academic enrichment and college? And if so, what were they like? How did you get involved? How did you find them? If you tell us a little bit about that, as we're talking about diverse experiences and how students can broaden their experiences in colleges. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and like you mentioned, um, through my, my, my minor in humanitarian engineering, I did do two service trips. Um, these are what uh, some would consider international um, study abroad trips. Um, but they were not your typical full semester somewhere else. This were more uh, focused on the engineering side and they're only a week long during spring break. Uh, my first one was actually my freshman year um, when we went uh, to Montaña Luz um, in Honduras. And then my second one, my sophomore year, um, we actually got to travel to my home country of Colombia with more of a STEM outreach uh, platform. Um, definitely both of these experiences align with my minor in humanitarian engineering on how can you use engineering for the betterment of communities. Um, so it was, uh, we traveled during spring break, but before the trip, we kind of put prepared on what we were going to do uh, once we actually went on this trip. And then once we got back, we documented on what was done, what did we learn. Um, so those were two I, that I definitely hold dear to, to my heart. And I definitely think it they expanded my experience. Um, which, again, going back to a couple of our previous comments, because um, college, I personally see it as, as an investment. Um, we go to college to hopefully get a good degree, get experience to then become a contributing adult um, wherever you may go. Um, and something that I know I struggled in a lot of um, either my colleagues or my mentees uh, throughout my time at Ohio State um, is, is getting that experience on how do you build your resume to then how do you go in a way sell yourself to um, in these career fairs to companies on why they should hire you 
because a lot of the times and now that I've had the opportunity to be on the other side of the fence um, being a recruiter, um, you see some students that uh, they are very good academically, but they don't have either those leadership opp uh, opportunities in the resume or uh, communication skills or team working skills. Because um, those at times as a recruiter are, are many of the things that, that I look for um, in a student. Um, I, Cause that, and that's what I tell a lot of times I do interviews or that I'm recruiting them. I'm, I'm not going to give you a calculus problem and tell you, hey, how to solve this. I'm going to tell you, hey, um, I need you to work on a, on a, on a team, uh, get their input, uh, work with experts, uh, the, the, um, put in a, uh, some type of solution to then put a plan together, put timelines. Um, granted, there are some positions where are a lot more technically um, focused, but a lot of the positions that either myself or a lot of my other friends that are not recruiters, um, it's more we're looking for like, are you a, a team player? Do you know how to um, have communication skills, problem solving skills? So having those experiences early on in college definitely allowed me to build my resume that once I started looking for internships uh, that sophomore year, I, I could show, hey, I was able to work on a team, implement a solution, documentation, good communication. Uh, we actually, which actually leads me to my second point on looking for those experiences outside of college. One that I do attribute my success now is my exposure to internships and co-ops. So during my time in college, I did six internships throughout different states. Um, I lived in states like Indiana, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, Texas, uh, with different companies, different uh, positions. Because again, going back to college as an investment, uh, you want to leave college with hopefully a good job in mind if that's the path you want to take but once you get to that job the last thing you want is uh, three to six months to realize what did I just sign myself to um, that I hate I hated here um, so those internships those experiences I call it sometimes as as dating um, you get to know the other person the other person gets to know you and then that um, that final offer um, it's like uh, you either move in together or something like that because um, you wouldn't start you marrying or like dating somebody you may have never known you'd like to either know the person or something like that um, so that's how I thought internships an opportunity to know the company at the same time expand my skills to um, then bring back to, to college to, to apply to my classes and to just long-term career um, I did multiple experiences um, internships in different industries and different roles that really brought me to what I do right now of my last internship was in the same company, the same factory that I'm currently in, because it did show me, hey, this is something that uh, I like, I'm good at, and gave me the opportunity to move from being an intern to an engineer to a technician supervisor to now a manager. Um, but yeah, I definitely attribute uh, my internships, at least in my degree, my field uh, of engineering to be a very important point um, in my college time. You said, sorry about that. You said that um, you started looking for the opportunities um, to get involved right off the bat, right? Right, as soon as you got to college. And that's something that's highly encouraged is build that community early and build it strong, build it wide. There's research that shows that the more people that you meet on a college campus, the less likely that you are to depart, which means that you're not completing your degree. Um, and so it's really important for you to build relationships with people on campus, to build that social capital, to understand the ins and outs of whatever campus that you're going to. Um, and so looking for internships, getting involved, student organizations, um, looking for opportunities to build community are so essential. Um, and something that I want to go back to that I think is important for us to talk a little bit more about is what is this legacy that we have as first generation Latinos who are in the United States? I think that might be a really good question for me to ask based on some of the things that you've been saying. Um, because I think that our shared experiences 
make it unique in terms of what this college degree means, right? And in terms of it's it's kind of like the golden ticket for why we came to the United States. You know, education is a way to just engage in a more variety, varied opportunities and more diverse opportunities for yourself longer down the road. And so to think about it that way, um, what are your thoughts as someone who is in the university arena with the idea that there is something that means the, the degree means differently or hits differently if you're a first generation Latino who is from a different country and, you know, had the opportunity to study and go to school in the United States, which has a lot of educational opportunities for a lot of different students. Um, you know, not all students, I'm not going to make it like that, but um, there are educational opportunities that may not be afforded to people who come from countries who are um, maybe discriminated because of their gender or their race in terms of educational opportunities or their age, um, which happens a lot. So I don't know if there's anything that you can add to that or Anything that you'd like to say about that? Yeah, definitely. As, as being a, a Latino and in higher education, um, yeah, for me, it definitely hit different because I wanted to show my worth, if that makes any sense. Because um, I'll be honest, I ran into situations where um, I, I got told, oh, you, you got this opportunity because you're, you're a Latino. Um, you got this opportunity because you're the diversity hire or that and it, it it really messes with you um in a way it's like did, did I get it because I was Latino or did I get it because I worked very hard to get where I was mm -hmm. um so that's how I also measured um I'd say I wouldn't say measure but that that kind of got me to I need to succeed I not to show them that I could do but to show myself to say, hey, I, I did this because um, I, I did it because I, I was good I, I, to, to say that because I was able to, to accomplish what I, I put my, myself forward. Um, but that was one thing that definitely hit me hard um, either at, at college or in my internships when, when you're the only person of, of color in the group and everybody's looking at you as as oh you're you're just a number that they needed to fill or you're just a quota like no I I'm outperforming you either academically or in any any other firms it's not just because of this um, and then having that perspective on I'd say being the being seen as the underdog um, um, I, I, it's something that I do keep um, still I, I I like at times even to set the expectation low or people set the expectation low for me and then exceed those expectations on you shouldn't have thought about me as an underdog. I, I could outperform any of your top person. Um, so that, that is one thing that definitely drove um, me to succeed in college and even more so now um, where I am a, a, as a person um, to, to, not, to, to not just be, be looked down upon to say like this. And I think that's such an important message because more than likely you're going to be a Latino if you're a Latino that goes to college into a four-year college into any of the four-year colleges. More than likely, unless you go to an HSI, which is a Hispanic serving institution, you're not going to see a huge number of Latino students. And so understanding that your allies, your communities, your people, those five people that we talked about earlier in the talk, they could come from all different variety of different places and that we've talked tonight about how it's okay and it's really encouraged to have those different and varied points of view in order to grow and learn throughout your collegiate experience. And so I don't know if I could agree with you more in terms of wanting to get a job and job opportunities because education is tied to income. There's no way of slicing that 
the more education you have, typically, the higher your income level. Not always, and I don't think that college is for everyone, but I do believe that college is a way to better your circumstances, and it's the fastest and most stable and wisest investment that people can make with their time, money, talents, and resources, especially when they're young. So, um, <clears throat> Nick, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. I think it was a great conversation. I think we've covered a lot of different topics, um, a lot of different areas to go over. Um, but I just appreciate you so much taking the time to talk to us and have an honest conversation about what your experience was like and what it was like to be um, such coming in with such a diverse experience. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. I hope you have a good night. Bye.